And so let's go now to the series, our third series, and it will be about time, talent, and gifts. And do you see the picture? And I hope you, you somehow perceive what this picture means. And later I will talk about it, but look at it very intently. There are three guys, there are four actually, and you, especially those who are student of the word, you should have, if this is a kabut, what's that, a, what is that uh, uh, game in, in our SOL kahoot. or life class? Kahoot. 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 So if this is a kahoot, you should know the answer. And the next picture is about this. And for you, you should try to see what this means. And I will not tell you yet, but I will tell you later on. And then the third picture is all about Charles Spurgeon saying, If you have not the time, God gave it to you, and you must have misspent it. Alright, so let's progress. It is important to realize, my brothers and my sisters, that everything we do with our time and talent and giftings reflect our walk with God. If we are working in the fear of God, if we are working in the Spirit and following Jesus, we must know and understand what is about being generous aside from money is also being generous with time with talent and the gifts and especially during our time my brothers and my sisters this is desperate time and we should not misspend the time that we are still enjoying because there will be a time that everything will all be so disrupted time-wise and you end up somewhere else that is eternal in perspective, in aspect, and you don't end up in the presence of an eternal God. And my brothers and my sisters, I will always be warning every one of us regarding this. If you have already read, and I'm believing you have already read Matthew chapter 25, because I will always mention about this, and I always warn every one of, it, every one of us in Pagasa Center that you should master Matthew chapter 25 as a warning. So that we will not misbehave, misunderstood what God wants us to really do as a church. Amen. And so, living our lives as stewards of God's grace means we recognize that everything comes from God and all we have is God's. I mentioned that earlier. It's all God's properties. And all that we have to do is to steward them according to the story of the parable of the talent. He called them, three of them, and he gave them talents or money or whatever in that perspective so that they will be able to use it, reproduce it in a certain time frame. Because when the master has come back, meaning to say, he set a time for them to do something for what God or the master has given the three guys. And of course, you know the story, there are three guys <coughs> the two guys, when they came back with their reproduction or fruitfulness or gains, God was so pleased. And the two guys in the first picture were smiling while the third guy was frowning or sad. 
And so my brothers and my sisters, I would like every one of us that we recognize that everything that we have belongs to God. Amen. And so our devotion, one of our devotion, devotional reading is about Jesus, our, our Jesus Christ came to serve. And so he is a pattern, he is a model for us as his church, as his disciples. His intention is to do something. For us to be part of his family, his intention for us is to really do something that he is doing. And so my brothers and my sisters, if Jesus Christ came to serve, that's the reason why we will also equally be serving God. And today I am talking about the virtue, the value of being generous. And it's all about now being generous with our time, with our talent, with our gifts. Because the church, the world today needs us, the church. It is now an opportunity for us, my brothers and my sisters, to go and, and, and do the work that God has already prescribed to us. That we will not stop despite of all these lockdowns. Because we can have some strategies how to do them and we, we know the strategies. We are being taught about how to reach out and if we are complying with government directives, we can even personally go and interact. My brothers and my sisters, there is nothing that we cannot do during this time. And we have to take this opportunity to serve God, to honor God, to please God, and being able, later on you will understand more about being generous with your time, your talent, and your giftings. Amen. And so, <clears throat> if we say it is blessed to give than to receive money, how beautiful it could be that we also will say how blessed I am when I also serve each other using my time, using the talent that has been given to me, the giftings that I am given to me for the pleasure of God. And of course, if we do that, God in whatever capacity, in whatever that He will do, for sure we will be blessed even more because we have given our time generously. We have used our talents and giftings generously for the sake of Jesus. Amen. And so, this is the problem. This is the problem. And this is always the problem. Even to us in Pagasa Center. There are people who are classified or are uh, noted as being sprinters rather than marathoners. And I hope you understand. I will, I will discuss further. And there is somebody who quoted something, Dr. Kenon Callahan quoted this and it says in today's culture people tend to be sprinters rather than marathoners they will participate for a short period of time rather than making a larger commitment many people want to be involved in the life of the church but feel overwhelmed by commitment needed that's the reason why my brothers and my sisters as the pastor, as your pastor of Pagasa Center, I have, we have leaders who are so gifted, who are so talented, who are so on fire, who are so, uh, you will, I, will, I will say they are so asset-wise, valuable, as far as I'm concerned. But seemingly, the reason why they cannot do much of what we should be doing because of 
commitment. And so my brothers and my sisters, this is what is happening in the world and is also happening in the church. We need people who will be marathoners. That's the reason why one of our core values, and I will talk about the core values later on, is about a long time relationship. A long, great whole journey. It's not a sprint, it is a marathon. And we are always being taught, and I will always say that our journey is not sprinting. It is about marathon. It's a long distance travel, long distance running, serving. And so my brothers and my sisters, I challenge you, whoever you are, if you are a sprinter, praise the Lord, but then I would like you to rise up, learn to run as a marathoner. Yes, you love God, but you only is an sprinter. You, you cannot give everything to God. While we are commanded, my brothers and my sisters, in Mark chapter 12, when God is Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And of course, he said, know and love God because there is only one God and he is Lord. And love God with all your minds, with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your soul, everything. And so it should not be sprinter one at a time, one at a time only. I'm only good for for certain period of time. No, my brothers and my sisters, I encourage you. I will do everything I can that you, every one of us, will be marathoners. Amen. And so, let me go through <clears throat> and just a review for the core values of the G12 as a church. We are, by the way, for those who are joining in or you are new with us in Pagasa Center, we are a church of Jesus Christ. We are Christ-centered. We are a Trinitarian. We are a Bible-centered church. And we are a disciple-making church. Meaning to say, we practice the G12 strategy. And so we identify ourselves as G12 church. And as a G12 church, we have 12 core values. And for you, especially the primary leaders, you should be memorizing this. Because every time you make palpacation, you remember and go back what we should value. Amen. And so just very quickly, this will be the job of the primary leaders or cell leaders to teach this to your disciples in your cell groups always being reminded because these are the values these are the priority these are the things that we should be doing as a church as his church amen for the purpose of global conquest okay so let's go very quickly number one core value is that i am a disciple of christ jesus and you should understand that when you become part of Pagasa Center, our intention is for you not to remain just an attendee, not just to remain as a believer, but we will help you progress into becoming a disciple that eventually you become a leader. Amen. And so, <coughs> you, especially Brother Orestas, the new VIP that has just joined us. I thank God for your life, but expect more, my brother. We will be now training you up into becoming a true disciple of Jesus. And of course, a true disciple of Jesus, as Jesus has commanded us, you should know about denial, you should know about carrying the cross, you should know about following Jesus, but that is a process. And that we will be teaching you along the way. Amen. And number two is that I am caught by the vision. Meaning to say, what is the vision? It is the vision of, of God, the vision of Jesus. 
God wants the humankind to come back to Him. Jesus doesn't want anyone to perish, but that everyone should come into repentance and be saved. And so it, it is about bringing back humanity into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so that is about global conquest. That is about vision. That is about to be caught by the vision. And so you have to know, are you caught by the vision or are you just a a a marathoner of the vision we need a I, I, we I, are you just a sprinter or are you a marathoner in that sense number three i am committed to my cell group every one of us should be part of a cell group and so if you're not part of a cell group yet then you just tell me you tell uh, <clears throat> you tell Pastor Ache and we will assign you a cell group. Number four, I am passionate spiritually. So it is about being so on fire. And I will always remind you, my brothers and my sisters, if you are indwelled by the Holy Spirit and you are listening to the whisper of the Holy Spirit, there is no reason that the fire of God in your life is put down because it should be up you should be ablaze so that we will be able to passionately be committing our lives into the work of God in our church amen and then number five is about being submissive to authority because rebellion is a witchcraft and so, my brothers and my sisters, our submission is first to God. And if you belong to Pagasa Center, your submission is to the pastor, me and Pastor Rache. And then your submission to your cell leaders. And so, my brothers and my sisters, there is someone has to be submitted to somebody. Amen. And as a church, again, I will repeat, the submission to the pastoral authority and so every time you somehow become a skeptic critical or make, becoming now rebellious the bible is saying rebellion is a witchcraft which god hates and so number six is about commitment to time number seven a lifelong relationship which i mentioned earlier you should be a marathoner Number eight is that you, we should love training and this church is so happy in training people. But hopefully as we train you, when you have been trained, you act, there should be action on what you have trained for. Amen. And then I am number nine, I am a leader. You are supposed to grow into that position of being a leader and a leader should be someone who, who, who's, who has some people that follows him or she. You cannot be a leader if there's no one following you. And the dream is to become a leader of leaders. And number 10, that I will fulfill my church goal. Every one of us are being given a goal, our personal goal. And as a church and as a disciple-making church, as a winning church, then we tell you that you should pray and fast for three precious souls that eventually you will be able to win them for Jesus. And then number 11, I want my church to grow. And so my brothers and my sisters, you and I, the reason why you are being taught, being reminded, being lifted up in your being generous, it is for the purpose to grow. Because a, a immature Christian cannot give. An immature Christian cannot be generous. So, to be mature, to mature is to really being able to be magnanimous and i hope you get that and we as a church we should ambition to grow 
There is no one who should be thinking of remaining as a baby. As a church, we will ambition to build this church for the glory of Jesus. And my brothers and my sisters, it is a job to do. Amen. And so number 12 is about young people that we should be so aggressive in reaching out and developing, training them because they are the next generation hope of every nation. Amen. And so, my brothers and my sisters, <clears throat> today we need that our church be generously committed to everything that we are doing time-wise, talent-wise, and gift-wise. And that is already mentioned in core value number 3 and 6. Look at this. The more involved and committed people in the church, will the church become a stronger community. If we all are working, <coughs> the church grows. And being a doctor, the reason why maybe somebody is unhealthy is because some part of that somebody is unwell, sick. But by the power of God in us, we cannot be sick spiritually if we intend to grow and every time we talk about growth for all of us in Pagasa Center I will remind every one of us about the basic life the basic life makes us grow and if you have question about that then you just uh, call me talk about about it to me or to your leaders because the basic life makes you grow and makes you healthy my brothers and my sisters I cannot I will not elaborate all right <clears throat> giving ourselves to God's work is not about ourselves if you understand what I am talking about it's not about us being you know giving it because you want to give it no it is not about that. It is about we are doing this, being generous, will be generous with our time, with our talents and gifts, because we want to obey God. In the perspective of Matthew chapter 25 regarding the parable of the talent. Again, I would say the three guys. <clears throat> We know that the one that was given five was so generous with his time, talents, and giftings that he was able to bring back more of what was given him. So he was able to bring another five to the five that he has already. The second person who was given three was able to bring back another three. But the third person, he was given one, but he was not able to use his time. Maybe he didn't find time to work out this precious one talent. Maybe even if he has been given the talent, he, was, he did not do and invest, use the talent. Most probably he has the gift. How to, how to do it? But he did not do it. And of course we know what happened to him, my brothers. Because it is just a picture of being disobedient to the mandate of the master or the mandate of God to us to really use our time, our talent, and giftings. But for our perspective as a church, as we are rising our level, I would like every one of us to be able to generously, aggressively, lovingly use our time, 
our talents and gifting, especially during these times. And let me elaborate further. According to Romans chapter 12, verse 1, in the Amplified Version, if you are not yet getting this, you might be thinking that this is just my own doing. And I am believing that this was given to me as a message to develop so that the people of God in Pagasa Center will rise up to that level of generosity. Understanding that generosity is not only about money. It is also about time, talent, and gifts. And the next will be about relationship. That I will be talking about. Because even in the church, our relationship has to somehow be properly positioned and it should be in a generous way of relating to the brethren and even to those outside of our families. But anyway, let's read Romans chapter 12 verse 1 in Amplified Version. Look at this. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And so my brothers and sisters, when we do this, it is because we are worshiping God. Amen. And so, as David will always say, I will not give anything to God that will not cost me or hurt me. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, as we are trying to understand about being generous, about rising up to that generous le generosity level, in that magnanimous level, it means to say, it will cost us. This is about denying. Now, if we are talking about generosity, about time, now we have to deny our time so that we can, especially during this time, our church COVID uh, monitoring now have 20 cases. Before this second wave, we were seldom having active COVID. But now we have 20. And true enough, what the news are talking about, what the medical scientists are talking about, that this variant of the COVID is so aggressive that now we have more than 80,000 last night of cases in the United Kingdom. And our debt is rising up. Last night, it was more than 1,200 or 1,400 debt in 24 hours. And so, now the church needs people because Sister Regina, who is our one of our COVID uh, help, monitoring, and people who go to the grocery, who, who bring food, now they are the ones sick. Sister Regina and family are COVID, so they are isolating. And now Sister Anna and Brother Jerry are also COVID positive. And we need people to really now understand that church needs people to give out their time generously to use their talent and giftings for the purpose of now taking an opportunity to reach out first to the brethren and to reach out to others. And I, I saw some, some, some uh, messengers input last night and I saw uh, a sister and, and the way she is now trying to win most probably these young new nurses is that she is asking, do you have a tree? Do you have an information about a house, three, three, three room house, so that these new nurses can 
have a place to go. Of course, those are the things. If you are now becoming generous of your time, of your talent and giftings, you will be really not only be asking people, but you yourself will find way to help those people. And this is all about being generous with our time. And I hope we understand that. Amen. It will cost us because we will really have to deny our time, our effort, our rest, our comfort, our, our money, and so forth and so forth. But my brothers and my sisters, this is about being obedient to God. Amen. And so, <coughs> costly giving is a reminder that we are giving back to God what is rightfully His in the first place. And if Jesus have come to serve, I would like to challenge every one of us Yes, it will be a costly giving of our time, of our talent, of our giftings, but it is just about doing what is rightful in the eyes of God, pleasing to God, and that is what we aim to attain as a church. Amen. And so look at this. Offering and giving Him out of gratefulness for what he has given us we are to be generous to offer our time to him because he has given us anyway the time he owns the time and there are some people who will teach do you tithe your time that i we thought is only the money that we can uh, tithes the 10 percent but then we can use the principle of 10 percent for our time and and of course in every day we should be offering 10 percent of the time to him and of course it please god that we offer our times to him of course we will subdivide all this 2.4 hours per day for the purpose of studying the word and for the purpose of doing the job that God wants us to do, especially during this time. All right. And so also we become generous in offering our talents and gift because this is his blessing to us. As we are, are created in his image, it is just part of us. This is part of his. All the talents and time and the gift things we equally should be offering back to him and then of course we have discussed already about money because he is the one who provided the works and the financial blessing anyway amen all right so now i have to talk three points regarding Living generously by giving our time, talents, and gifts according to Matthew chapter 25. This will be your assignment to read. Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 to 30. This is quite long reading, but it is all about the parable of the talents. Make time to read this, focus, learn. And then Luke 12, 34 is all about what we treasure in our hearts is what is really important. If you treasure money, it is there in your heart. You love money. That's why we are commanded. Love God, not money. Alright. In Matthew chapter 6, 19, it's about investing into the heavenlies wherein our investment will not be robbed by thieves. And then, of course, the principles that we will learn in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 and 8 is all about the reciprocity of blessing. Amen. And so, <clears throat> there are truths regarding being generous with our time, talents, and gifts according to Matthew chapter 25. 
from verse 14 to 30. Number one is that the Bible rewards stewardship but punishes laziness. Did you get that? The Bible rewards stewardship but punishes laziness. And I've just mentioned about those three guys. The two guys were so obedient, were so generous in using their time and talent and giftings so that that was, was given to them were able to reproduce to the pleasure of God. That God, when they reported to Him, He said to them, my good servant, my faithful servant, that eventually he said, come into my presence. While the third one, the third one, he was kicked out from God's presence, and then the one that was given was taken again, taken away from him, and when he was taken or kicked out, into the darkness, we know what happened to him. He was gnashing his teeth and weeping. And we know what that means. There is a punishment for the lazy people in the church. And so, my brothers and my sisters, one day, one day, and soon it will be, hopefully, that there will be a day of reckoning and giving of accounts. You have to remember that. We have to remember that. That God have called us, have assigned us duties, have blessed us so that we can be generous, has given us the time so that he, we can be generous with our time and talents and giftings. Or else, He will take our time. And you know what it means, that your time is up, means to say, you have not been obedient like the one with one talent. And so I will take your life and kick you out from my presence. And you know what it means. What do you want, my brothers and my sisters? Do you want God's favors and blessing or God's chastisement? And so sometimes, sometimes I, I when I hear people getting sick and I know who they are sometimes I am becoming judgmental because of what I understand about the word of God especially the parable of the talent especially when Jesus was talking about being the true vine and that we are the branches that Sometimes I, 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 I am not really will be thinking, is he being punished? Because if we are being obedient to God and we are being tested, it is for our own good. And our previous devotion, I cannot remember which one, is all about the testing yeah, it, it, it is all about the testing. Jesus walked through the waters. It is for the purpose to test the faith of his disciples on the boat. And then the reverse happened. Now the Pharisees are the one testing Jesus. But everything that is happening to us, let's take it as a test. That's the reason why I gave you that Deuteronomy 8 to review because that is all about being tested because for the purpose that when we inherit something wonderful we are ready for it and so i don't want everyone any one of you my brothers and my sisters to end up being punished because you did not listen to this message you resist what i am talking about regarding being generous with your time as i've said we need people to help out, there are many people and there are many people still connecting with us. They tell us that they are something like this. They are suffering from it while we are not part of their families. 
that sometimes I, I, I like for example, <clears throat> I was asked by one of my primary leaders, and he said, the family is with COVID, do we need to help out? Do we have to include them into the monitoring, uh, our monitoring and help? And I said, uh, I think uh, we should uh, somehow refrain from actively helping them out because they belong to another church that maybe if we do something it will appear different and so we will just pray for them unless they will ask for help and there are people not part of us but they are asking help and I just saw a testimony and a, a, a written testimony that says it is somehow embarrassing to be receiving help but I realize really there will be a time that you will be needing help and that's purposely my brothers and sisters giving our time to everyone especially to the family of God among us and as I've said last time that my ambition is to reach out to other group of people, not only among us Pagasa Center, as a platform that we can get into their lives by helping them in whatever way, opening our time, opening our efforts, opening our money, our food, and whatever. But that will mean a lot, my brothers and my sisters. I would rather do that <clears throat> Because I am after favoring God. And once He is favored, He will be favorably even more to us, to me. And so my brothers and my sisters, be warned that the Bible according to Matthew chapter 25 regarding the parable of the talent, the lazy guy ended up kicked out in darkness punish amen and so number two <coughs> number two truth about this is about wasted gifts is wasted opportunities and there's a quotation on the right side a picture that says nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity my brothers and my sisters, especially the young people, you are so distracted by today's way of doing it because of video games. Studies have been done and studies are telling us that there's a lot of young people, even the adult one, who are spending so much time with their video games and if you belong to a church and if you are part of a cell group <clears throat> and if you even is a disciple on process but you are so engaging with your video games my brothers and my sisters the gifts the time the talents that God has given you you are wasting them and losing the opportunity of honoring and pleasing God. And if you understand the Romans chapter 12 verse 1, it's all about a sacrificial offering of our bodies, everything of us. But then we, you especially, are distracted and this is true happening. You are wasting God's time you are wasting God's talent that he has given you and the gift things that you should use and God will punish as the story talks about in the parables of the talents and so today's situation in our church we want to ask for people who will be generous in giving out their time their talents, their giftings. If your talent is cooking, we need cooks. 
It's difficult to cook because I have experience cooking and distributing my cook food to those who need, who are in need. And so, my brothers and sisters, as your pastor, I asked you, rise up to that level of generosity. Yes, praise the Lord, maybe you are now becoming generous with your finances, but how beautiful it will be that you will also rise up in your generosity, giving up your time, your talents, and give things. Your talents is about cooking. We need cooks. Your gifts, all the good things that the Holy Spirit will give you is all for the edification of the body. And just in case you don't know about the good things of the Holy Spirit, only true followers, believers of Jesus, are to be receiving gifts because if the Holy Spirit is in you, you can ask Him. And of course, in Luke chapter 11 or 12, it says there, if you, the human fathers, knows to give good things to your children who ask something, how much more God our Father who will not give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit if you ask. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I will advocate every one of us. If you don't know or you have no inkling of what gift things you have, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there are 22 of them. Ask in prayer. And you will be challenged. When you ask, you 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 be like the widow. You are so persistent in your prayer. You should be per fervent in your prayer because God will not give it to you <coughs> if He will not see you really dedicated and committed. If you're just a sprinter, maybe He will change His mind to giving you. He wants us to be marathoners because our job, our thing to do is a for a long haul. Of a journey and so <coughs> my brothers and my sisters I am asking people to be involved in our benevolence ministry sister Regina <coughs> is just recovering sister Anna is now and brother Jerry are COVID and there are some of us in the benevolence ministry who are getting the COVID. And so, my brothers and my sisters, there's a lot of people who we can reach out and help. But we need people to generously give their time, <coughs> talents, and give things so that we can continue Honoring God in our being a church. Also, because of the digital platform, I would like to ask people who are very good in the media or in the IT, because last time, last time, our Wednesday or Tuesday uh, gathering, the media somehow was uh, a little bit off <coughs> and I need people, I believe God needs people among us who are really will be generous in giving their time, they will be dedicated, they will be marathoners in serving God in the media team and even in the children ministry I saw in the children's ministry that there are many people there are many young people who are joining in who their parents I don't know meaning to say our, our, our people are being able to reach out to many people and their children are joining in <coughs> and
and still I will ask for people who will join the meet the, the children's ministry because God is bringing in many children so that there will be enough children ministry workers that we will be so effective in really bringing them up into that knowledge of God that we will be a church that are really complying with the core value number 12 valuing the young people even the very young amen and so also how beautiful it will be that in the music team all the members of the music teams will be marathoners that you will listen to your leader despite of the situation let's 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 be let's 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 cooperate we 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 will let's complement let's help that our music team will even go higher and higher in the level because we need to really even be actively beautifully wonderfully be worshiping god in our music team and i wish my brothers and my sisters that we will spend time in your preparation as people that will lead the church in worship and praise and so my brothers and my sisters i urge you and so i will just want to read proverbs 22:29 <clears throat> proverbs 22:29 That says, my brothers and my sisters, if we understand what I'm talking about, about not wasting your talent, your time, your giftings, look at this. What will happen to us? Look at this. In verse 29 of Proverbs 22, it says, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. What a, a stimulus for every one of us when we excel in the ministries that we are involved with that one day, my brothers and my sisters, we will stand before kings. And not only kings in this world, but we will be standing in the presence of the King of Kings one day, assured because we did not waste our time, because we did not waste our talent, because we did not waste our giftings. We grab on all opportunities to honor, to please, and to worship God in everything that we do. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and so my brothers and sisters number three is about the time is short whether you like it or not I am one person who is anticipating that Jesus is coming soon all the signs all that is what happening as I've discussed before last Sunday I said I was studying, or I'm still studying about what has happened in 1918, what are the succeeding events that happened following that, and we are in our, in our time. It happened, it is now happening, and the situation is getting worse, and we don't know we don't know what will happen next because we are only on our second wave. Praise the Lord for the vaccine that we are now about to get. <clears throat> and hopefully it will be effective and safe. And I will always say to you, my brothers and my sisters, do not listen to people who are not believing in the vaccine. There are more than one million 
now I think that have been vaccinated. But there are only one and, and of course I heard this morning that there is one and that is a doctor who had a complication but they, he is just one of the million maybe. I would rather go for the vaccine and experience and not to experience what people who have become so unwell rather than experiencing the bad situation of being in COVID. And so, I advocate you, I will tell you, my brothers and my sisters, let us be wise. Now is the time to really go for the vaccine. Now is the time to really rise up on the level of us being generous. Let's let us not say, no, there's no more. Next time, next time, next time, when the lockdown is finished. No, I will still insist. Let us continue to rise up on this as long as we comply with the government directives. And, and, and I think if you go through the NHS, uh, who are the people that can go out? There's a list of them and we can be there, allowed to go if our purpose is to serve our brethren. Amen. All right. <clears throat> and so, also, I would like to encourage you, because the time is short, and it was in our devotional very recently, and our devotion is in Isaiah 60. <coughs> and at the end of Isaiah 60 is the picture of our final destination. But before the final destination, there is a commandment, there is seemingly a, a mandate, and, and verse 1 says, Arise and shine. We have to arise and shine. We have to really go. And when we go and arise and shine to people, it means to say we are to be generous with our time. You just don't say, oh, I will go and, and say hi. And I will go back and I will leave him. No, my brothers and my sisters, let's find way how to really engage people. If we are allowed one-on-one, -on -one, then we have to find that precious soul. If God is really giving us those precious souls, I believe, my brothers and my sisters, when we spend, when we are generous with our time, with our talents and giftings, that precious one soul will be taken into the kingdom of God. And again, <clears throat> let, me, let me just use my devotion in John chapter 5, verse 7. And this is about the pool in Bethesda. And, and people who are lame, blind, and sick are all there gathered because every year, once a year, there will be steering of the pool and anyone who gets into the pool will be healed or a miracle will happen. And so God spoke to me and he said to me through this devotion, why not be aggressive into bringing people into the pool? And mind you, Jesus, when he went there, he immediately helped someone who has been there for quite some time, 35 years, and he became well. And so collectively, as disciples of Jesus, who understand our job that we will be agents of reconciliation, we will be the agents that we can bring people into the kingdom of God, every time we have opportunities, let's just do it quick because the time is short because if these people will end up without jesus and and this will be the dangerous part if god have spoken to you to go to that person and if you did not go what ezekiel chapter 8 is talking about you will 
answer for that precious souls that lost. And so, my brothers and my sisters, let's let's bring everyone into the pool of salvation. Let's help people into that pool where salvation and miracle will happen. <coughs> Meaning to say, actively, committedly, magnanimously, giving our time, our talents and gifting so that we will be agents of salvation into this darkened world, messed up world, sick world because God has called us, my brothers and my sisters. Going back to the parable of the talent, the master called them, called his servants, <clears throat> three of them, and he gave them the talent and gave them instruction and expecting that in due time they will be able to bring in result of what they have done with their talents. And so, my brothers and my sisters, you and I should understand our time is in the hand of God. Anytime God can take your time, the problem, if He takes your time and you end up somewhere else, or maybe He allows the time to be taken by Satan so that you end up somewhere else, that's a big problem. Of course, we know, and I am, I am, I am, I am really encouraged with Brother Joey, because when I spoke to him, he said, "I praise the Lord that my wife has gone into the presence of God. I praise the Lord that I belong to a church that cares." And I said, and he said. I know where my wife went. And we know that when God takes us home, we end up in His presence. He knows He controls everything. So there are two who will get life or get the time. Because Satan, <clears throat> in John 10.10, 10, it says, the purpose of Satan is to still to kill and to destroy but God Jesus his purpose is to give us abundant life and the abundant life the best that anyone can attain is to be in the presence of God that's the reason why in Psalm 116 verse 12 or 15 it says there Precious in the sight of God, the death of His saints. And so, my brothers and my sisters, our time is not ours. We cannot control our times. I would rather be doing the work of God passionately, committedly, magnanimously, because I would like to really be in that direction into becoming a dweller if you have read your Isaiah chapter 60 at the end part of it that is the description of where we will be going those who have obeyed loving God serving God being generous, my brothers and my sisters, now my challenge. We have talked so much about being generous. I've defined, we, we found the definition of generous, being generous and generosity. And we talk about, about especially being magnanimous. And I hope you understand what 
I have been talking about being magnanimous with our money because anyway we don't owe it and because we love God we freely generously cheerfully give it out so that we can serve God we can serve people believing that in everything that we have they are all given to us that we are just stewards and so my brothers and my sisters today I have spoken regarding being generous to our time to our talents and to our giftings and I am believing in Pagasa Center there's a lot of you among us who are I believe are talented we are a congregation that many somehow envy because of who maybe you are that's why they 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 look watch us because I believe that we are so gifted we are so talented the only problem is about the marathoners attitude and the sprinters attitude so today I'd like to challenge you that you aim to be a marathoner especially now I, I have I have already said we have a need of people into the benevolence ministry to the media ministry, to the children's ministry, even to the music ministry, that if we will be rising up to that level of being generous, my brothers and my sisters, it says when people comes together committed, the stronger we will become as a church. And when we are strong, it doesn't mean to say that we will just be being strong but being strong in the being used by God there's a work that we have to do my brothers and my sisters and so for you whoever you are my brothers and my sisters who have joined us and this might be your first time second time third time and you have not yet maybe surrendered your life to Jesus the reason why firstly you are invited is for us to be able to bring you into the family of God that you yourself will be assured that you have done the process you have gone through the process of becoming a child of God remember there is a process for people who are in their childbearing age or maybe have experience giving birth you don't have a baby that is nine months at once it needs to start from the beginning into the conception into the development into eventual delivery so it takes time so for us as a spiritual beings we need to have a spiritual rebirth and this is all that we are wanting you especially the newcomers to really know and understand man is tripartite body soul and spirit but we need to be born again in the spirit and so if you have not yet done so i would like to invite you it is a process as I've said all that you have to do is to confess who you are that you have a need of a Savior that you are a sinner and that you are desperate into becoming part of the family of God and so I would lead you into your prayer this will be your prayer do this Believing that this will be the start of your journey formal start of your journey in every race 
in every competition, there's always that formal start. And so this will be your initial start. So let's, let's bow down your head and raise your hands towards heaven and repeat after me your prayer. Lord Jesus, I have come and joined this church, this gathering today. And I want to declare my need for you, Lord Jesus. That I need you to save me because I am a sinner. Lord Jesus, forgive me from all my sins. Wash me clean as you promised in Isaiah chapter 1. That even if my sins are red as crimson and as red as blood, you can wash me to be white as snow and white as wool. Lord Jesus, I believe and I acknowledge that you are God who became human, who went to the cross to die for the sins of mankind, to save mankind. I believe that you died and you were buried, but on the third day you rose again from the dead. I also believe that you will return again. And so Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. And I accept you as my Savior to be my Lord and to be my God. Lord Jesus, send the Holy Spirit upon me that I will be indwelled by His presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you for the eternal life that I will now have. Thank you that my name is now written in the book of life. Thank you, O Holy Spirit, for I am believing that you are now in me. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And so I will pray very quickly for you, whoever you are who prayed that prayer. Father, you know them, O oh God. You know them. And I lift them up to you, O oh God. Take control upon their lives now. Allow them, O oh God, to immediately experience your work, O oh God. That they will, in due time, will be giving their testimony of miracle of salvation. God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. God, for every one of us, thank you that today we heard about being generous, about time, about talents and gifts. Spirit of God, I ask, help your church, help us, your church, that we can comply, O oh God, of this being magnanimous, so that we can please you as we present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, that Lord, this will honor you as we worship you with our lives. God, thank you. We bless your holy name, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.